Well, after many, many years of trying to get this to work, I have finally been handed a glorious opportunity to play this fantastic childhood LEGO classic. Hey everybody, it's Colorful Artie, ya boy. Welcome to a new Let's Play. This is Manic Miners, which is a remaster slash remake of LEGO Rock Raiders, a classic uh, 90s LEGO game that's a real-time strategy, like cave explorer pikmin like type game it's really really fantastic i've wanted to play this on my channel for a long time but the thing about old 90s computer games it's very hard to run them on modern machines but i want to give special thanks to baraklava who single-handedly took it upon himself to do this fan-made remaster of rock raiders you are a real one and yeah this, he literally remade it from the ground up, as far as I can tell. Made some quality of life improvements. It has far better graphics here than it would have if you played it back in the day. Higher sound quality. And apparently, so even some custom levels are, option, are available as well. And I believe custom level editors. So he's getting, like, community levels in place. I don't know if we're going to be playing those or not, but I at least want to play the main campaign. I've never beaten the whole thing, because... Another aspect of Rock Raiders is that it crashed a lot on our old computer, but apparently you could turn that off for this remaster, so I'm excited. We've got our crewmate made, so at this point, I think what we can do is play the game. So we got, yeah, campaign, uh, the campaign, there's the community levels, and then the tutorial levels. Now, I'm going to start by playing the tutorial levels, because I actually don't remember how to do everything here, and I also want to see if this includes some of the changes that have been made. If you guys don't care about the tutorial, you can just skip to the next video when it comes out, which will be starting the campaign. But there's a good amount of tutorial to go through, and I need a refresher. So let's start with... Roaming Rock Raider. Let's go. Hey, dude. How's it going? This tutorial will briefly show you how to handle your miners and move around. This tutorial is supposed to be played at speed one. All right, let's play. Welcome to Manic Miners, a Rock Raiders remake. Looks like it's your first time playing. Uh, okay, that's good. Any messages that appear here can be read again through navigating these arrow buttons. Click the flashing yellow arrow to go to the next message. There you go. Some messages will be put in the queue and some will take time to display immediately. In this tutorial, you'll learn how you and your Rock Raiders work. Rotate the camera with the right mouse button, move around with the WASD or arrow keys by holding the middle mouse button or by touching the edges of your screen. You can zoom the camera in or out with the scroll wheel. You can zoom, uh, all keyboard bindings can be adjusted in the advanced settings. Okay. Your rock raider needs to find their way back to the base. To their disposal, you will have a handheld drill. To select your rock raider, either left click or draw a rectangle around your, any rock raider you want to select. Okay, cool. No, we want to resume. All right, it's so first time playing. If you'd like a brief explanation of the UI, click the check mark, click X to stop at any point. Oh, we already... Okay, that's your resource uh, panel. It shows your collected resources. Collect the crystal... Click the crystals counter to toggle between energy crystals, locked in vehicles and buildings or not. All right, and then you can expand that. That's cool, that's the alert panel, yep. Yeah. That button opens up the radar. It's a powerful complex tool that allows you to monitor parts of a level and see undiscovered caverns. 
This is the top bar. Your first button activates action stations and puts your defenders on alert. Okay, that's the tutorial for that. This opens quick settings. You can quickly change game speed, camera settings, all that. This opens up the priorities panel. It allows you to communicate with your Rock Raiders which tasks should be done first. This button opens the power priorities panel. It allows you to decide which buildings should be powered first if you don't have enough energy crystals to power all of them. This is your action panel. Select units or click on the world and possible actions will be displayed here. Each content is unique. Your context is unique. Make sure you reach what each one of them do. That's it for the UI. Cool. All right, hey, dude. So yeah, this looks different from what I'm used to, but it looks very nice. Simply left click on a wall while your rock raider is selected to drill it. Some walls are undrillable. The cursor will show an animation if your hovered unit can drill into the wall and if the cursor is hovering. Now, where will they go? So yeah, solid rock, you can see there's an X next to that. So we can't drill solid rock, but there's dirt over here. You got it. A dirt wall is the quickest wall to drill in the game. You, drill for this. So this is actually, I believe this is a tutorial that's not actually in the main uh, regular game. Cool, we did it. Now keep drilling. Watch out for small spiders. They sometimes hide in the walls and cause your rock raiders to slip if they're stepped on. Vehicles are immune to small spiders. You can also turn this feature off in the Game Boy settings. An obstacle with solid rock. Don't worry, a single wall can't stand on its own. So drilling the dirt here will make the solid rock collapse and allow you to pass. This time, let's click on the wall first. Now click on the icon, drill wall. There we go. Oh no, our, our rock raider here. Uh, uh, he hit a spider. So each of these levels will have different objectives. Right now we're in the tutorials, but the main thing will be collecting energy crystals and ore, building up some buildings, and then some missions will be saving rock raiders who are lost in the cavern. It's, it's just very fun. Look at that, an energy crystal. Unfortunately, we can't store it right now, so your miner will ignore it. Keep looking for the base. All right. Ooh, we got lava over there. He's going to walk over here. Thankfully, their pathfinding is good, so they'll avoid walking on water and lava. Which is good, because lava is very, very dangerous. Dude, this... Oh, this looks and feels so good. I can't believe one guy did this remaster. He wants bacon or sandwiches. Whichever. Keep drilling. Dirt. This is loose rock. It takes a bit longer to drill compared to dirt. Hardly at all, though. It takes like a couple more seconds, but it's not that much. Oh, you found a tool store! It can teleport down rock raiders, distribute tools, and both dispense uh, and store resources. We can definitely use this. Start by teleporting down more rock raiders by clicking teleport rock raider in the upper right of the screen. You can have at least 10 at the start of a level. Cool. So there are four on standby. There we go. Look at that. Cool. This wall appears dangerous. It is causing a landslide, which will hurt your rock rider, rock raiders. Unfortunately, rock raiders can't drill this type of rock. Instead, click the wall and select reinforce wall. Okay, this one over here. Reinforce wall, please. You'll notice your miners start collecting resources and clearing rubble automatically in the meantime. Rubble from collapsed walls contain ore, which can be used to construct and upgrade buildings. You can, should explore this area. Try drilling any nearby walls to see if you can find the path uh, to the base. All right. Let's do that. That's hard rock. It cannot be drilled by rock raiders and requires dynamite or drilling vehicles. It will also collapse if you drill the walls on each side of it. Oh, sweet. That's an ore seam. It will take moderately long time to drill. Hang on. Your rock raider found some, uh, you found some hard rock that might lead to the base. The rock raider can't drill the hard rock directly. Time to use dynamite. Start by upgrading your tool star to level three. Costs five ore per upgrade, so you need ten. Maybe your rock raiders have already collected it for you. Uh, not quite, but they're doing a pretty good job. Uh, drill the ore seam. This is an energy crystal seam. It takes it a moderately long time to drill, and it contains extra energy crystals, which can be used to construct and power buildings, as well as powering vehicles. Yeah, let's drill that, sucker. Uh, 
Let's get some more Rock Raiders in. No, no reason not to, right? So they're all just kind of doing their own thing. So you kind of command them what to do, and then they'll do it. Which is very nice. Doesn't give me any info on the recharge team. Cool, cool. All right. Here we go. Oh, what's this? Dispense resources now. Let's upgrade the tool store. Let's upgrade it again. Great. Now click the wall and order a dynamite to it. There we go. A rock raider will automatically train as an explosives expert in order to carry dynamite. Yeah, they have to train to certain jobs in order to do certain things. But hey, this guy's already got it. So he'll put it there. Run away. Oh, wow. He's fast. <laughs> I love that scream. That's it! You found the base! Although it looks destroyed. I guess that means you'll have to rebuild it. But that's for the next tutorial. Now it is sandwich time. There we go! Congratulations, you completed the mission. Manic Miners lets you keep playing after you win in case you don't feel done yet. You cannot lose if you choose to keep playing. When you win, the button to view the briefing is now replaced by Exit Mission. Click this at any time to teleport your units out and move on to the next mission. All right, uh, let's finish. Everybody teleport out. We did the tutorial. How wonderful. Man, they are doing real fast tutorials here. They were definitely not this fast in the main game. Good, you are now an expert at handling your Rock Raiders. Next up is the buildings tutorial. Let's go. So these are not the vanilla tutorials. I thought these were going to be the vanilla tutorials, which actually has voice acting, but no. Building Rock Raider HQ. This tutorial helps you construct the buildings one by one. Good luck. Time to construct some buildings. First, let's wait until your miners have finished clearing up the rubble. Okay. Rubble. Oh, tool store now. Er, there we go. Right. As you can see, the tool store is pretty far away. Try teleporting a new one that's close to the base. Click the buildings menu. Okay. On the buildings menu, click the tool store. It can always be reconstructed. This shows a preview of the world you want to place the tool store in. Now place it so that the building itself is on the flat ground. And the building path is in front of, ne front of it. Next to it is a round power path. There we go. Good. Let's check the other buildings here. We've already talked about the tool store. It requires no power to function. It is a very helpful building. Yeah, it is. You need that on like every mission. This is the canteen. It requires no power to function. It dispenses sandwiches to your rock raiders, which heals them. That is a new building. That was not in the original game. This is the mining laser. It requires power to function. It can fire powerful laser beams, but at long ranges. And uh, shots drain crystals. Okay. This is the upgrade station. It requires power to function, and it can repair and upgrade your ground vehicles and air vehicles. It allows rock raiders to train as engineers so they can repair buildings. This is the docks. It requires power to function. It can teleport down and upgrade water vehicles. However, due to the cave-in, you won't have much use of those right now. Now it's up to you to construct the rest of the buildings. Hover each building icon and see what requirements it has. Power station. Can I Remember, you already have a level 3 tool store. Also, if you need resources, there are some nearby walls to drill. Alright, power station requires a level 2 teleport pad and a level 2... Uh, what is that? And a level 2 tool store. Support station. Level 2 tool store. Level 2 teleport pad. Level 2 power station. Upgrade station. We need tool store, teleport pad, and power station. Do we have a teleport pad anywhere? No, I don't think we do. Let's get that built. Everybody get to work. I also require you all to drill these. Oh, did I command two people to drill that? Interesting. What else do we have? Geological center is the same. The same with the ore refinery. Mining laser requires that and a level two support station. This is the teleport pad. It requires power to function. It can teleport down rock raiders and small vehicles when powered. It also allows rock raiders to train as pilots. All right. Then the super teleport. Level two tool store, level two teleport pad. Okay. Yeah, the canteen. Okay, so the canteen is a new building, but the others were all in the vanilla game. Good to know. At this point now, let's upgrade the teleport pad. We can now build the power station. That's a very important one. Let's put that right there. There we 
go. Yeah, the recharge seam, I believe, can be used to recharge energy crystals. I don't really know how, though. Now drill that. Wow! Rock Raiders go real fast! This is the power station. It provides power to all buildings connected to it via power paths. Provided you have enough crystals. Each building costs one crystal to power. Alright, well we gotta we gotta power some of these stuff up. We gotta build a power path here, we gotta build a power path here. Build a power path here. Look at that. Oh yeah, Docs is powered up. What's up, Docs? Build these to power up the mining laser, too. We also will upgrade that. We can now build the support station. Fancy. We definitely want that. Oh, uh, let's build Let's build it right there. That's hard rock. Let's reinforce that, sucker. Yo. Dude, we have a lot of ore. My gosh. We can't upgrade the power station anymore. We can't upgrade that. Let's do that. Oh, wait. That was a tool store. That was a mistake. Oh, oh. oh boy. Another energy crystal seam. That'll just give a bunch of energy crystals when we drill it, which is pretty cool. Mining laser. I forgot how funky the music is, man. So good. This is a support station. It requires power. It provides air for 10 rock raiders. It can dispense sandwiches and allows rock raiders to train as drivers. Let's upgrade that sucker right away. All right. So we already have the upgrade station. We already have the mining laser. We need the geological center, though. Oh, we need to connect it to power path, of course. Let's do that. Let's drill. So we need that. Or refinery we'll get later. Super teleport. An energy crystal has been found. We can build that as well. And there we go. Now, once all of these get completed, we will be in business. Let's go, gentlemen. Wow. They're so fast. I swear they're way faster here than they were in the regular game. This is the geological center. It requires power to function. It scans nearby cavern walls and displays them on the radar in the upper left corner. And it allows rock raiders to train as geologists. Cool. Super teleport lets us teleport down giant vehicles. And then the ore refinery lets us convert ore into ore bricks, which make it faster for rock raiders to build other buildings. It's not that great. Oh, I love this song. So good. This is the super teleport. It requires power to function. It allows teleportation of large vehicles capable of heavy-duty mining operations. Some of those big vehicles are really cool. My gosh, this music is funky! You are running low on ore. Drill some walls. I thought I already did. Are there more to be drilled? There you go. Do that. We have enough ore. That was all the buildings. Good job. Time to move on to vehicles. Oh, I see. Oh, 
Oh, that's the next good tutorial. Cool. I guess that's gonna be the next tutorial. We get to take a look at all the vehicles. Good job, you're now an expert with buildings. Next up, the vehicles tutorial. Moving Rock Rider Vehicle. Welcome, Artie. In this training mission, you will learn all about the vehicles in the, around the LMS Explorer and how to use them. An Welcome, Cadet. In this training mission, you will learn how to use vehicles. Powerful mining equipment that we can teleport down from the LMS Explorer. Vehicles can do the tasks much faster than Rock Raiders, and they also have their own unique capabilities of their own. We'll be using the unique capabilities of the vehicles to drill four crystal seams around the map. One across a river of water, one across a lake of lava, one buried behind a wall of hard rock, and one in an otherwise inaccessible cavern. Let's get started with the small transport truck. All vehicles need a Rock Raider to drive them, so the first thing you'll want to do is teleport down a handful of Rock Raiders. Cool. Rock Raiders can be trained in many skills. When it comes to vehicles, the important ones for drivers are drivers for land vehicles, pilots for air vehicles, and sailors for water vehicles. Cool. Rock Raiders will automatically train for vehicles if required, but they can also be given manual train orders. To do so, first select a Rock Raider. Then select the Training and Upgrade menu. Uh, it's here. Alright. Yeah, we do that. And then the relevant training. Since the small transport truck is a ground-based vehicle, it requires a driver. Train as a driver. Having a well-trained team of Rock Raiders can save crucial time in the caverns of Planet U. Rock Raiders retain their training, which means you have a skilled group right from the get-go. Once your Rock Raider has finished their training, they can drive the vehicle. They can either be done by selecting the Rock Raider, giving the get in order with the left mouse button, or by selecting the vehicle and giving a get driver order. Using either method, let's rev up that small transport truck. All right. Oh, it's right here. Get driver. Did you know that to learn, get a driver's license, you just need to do jumping jacks at the support station? It's true. Well done! The small transport truck is a vehicle that excels at carrying resources where they need to go. It's much faster than a Rock Raider, and it carries multiple resources at once. This makes it a useful vehicle in almost any situation. It's already an effective vehicle, but it can be upgraded e and to be even more effective. Nearly all vehicles can receive upgrades that can make them better at their existing task, or providing additional functionality to the vehicle. In the case of the small transport truck, its upgrades are simple. Even more speed, and even more cargo space. To upgrade a vehicle, you need a powered, up you need a powered upgrade station and plenty of ore. Click on the vehicle to select it, then select Upgrade Vehicle, then pick your upgrades. All right. Upgrade Vehicle. Let's give it more cargo space. More cargo space is great. So you can see it has, it has like the one dump in the back. And after this, boom, two. Well done. The small transport truck is now even more effective as it's simple yet important job of ferrying resources to where they need to go. Did you find the upgrade process a little slow? By upgrading the upgrade station itself, upgrades will be done even quicker. Upgrading the upgrade station is like any other building. Click on it and select the upgrade building. All right. Well done. The upgrade station has been upgraded. Keep an eye out for whatever upgraded vehicles might have access to. There's one more thing you need to know. The upgrade station is also able to repair vehicles that have taken damage. That's all for the small transport truck and the upgrade station. Let's move on to the next small vehicle, the Hover Scout. Teleport one down from the vehicles menu when you're ready. The Hover Scout is a fast and nimble vehicle. It only costs one crystal and is the only vehicle to not require training to drive. This makes it useful for quickly getting a miner to an area you want, which can be very useful when controlling a Rock Raider directly. That, in addition to moving speedily, it has one ability that your Rock Raiders cannot do. It is able to jump over an impassable tile. Look at this energy crystal. Rock Raiders aren't able to walk over to this gap, or aren't able to walk over this gap right there so they wouldn't be able to collect it but the hover scout can jump over the corner of walls to land safely i did not know that you to get this energy crystal out of here first you'll need to move the hover scout close to the wall to make the jump all right no we don't need that hover scout move over there the easiest way to use the vehicle's jump ability is to give it a move order to the place you want it to jump to. Other methods include double clicking on the vehicle and using space when directly controlling the vehicle. Using any of these methods, let's get into that cavern. Well done! Your hover scout has made it into this small cavern. Now get the crystal out of here. While the hover scout doesn't have a dedicated cargo hold, all vehicles have one manual carry capacity. This means that if a Rock Raider is holding a resource, they are manually offered, ordered to get in a vehicle, they will take the resource with them in the vehicle. This allows you to slowly transport resources across gaps like this. To do this, you'll first need to get out of the vehicle by clicking on it and select Exit Vehicle. 
All right. Tell them to pick up the resource. Then get back in the vehicle. And finally, jump back through the gap with the crystal. So here's an interesting one. I view. Hey, look at this. Are we controlling the hover scout? Oh my gosh, we can actually move the hover scout around with the... Oh, that's so cool. Well done. The hover scout has made it safely back with the crystal in tow. Kind of. Dude. Oh my gosh, you can actually drive it around with the arrow keys. That's so cool. I actually never knew you could do this. All right. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, how do we switch? Relative view. No. X. Um, oh, escape end. There we go. To finally get the crystal into storage, you'll need to get the Rock Raider out of the vehicle one last time so they can deposit it. Of course we do. There are other crystals around that might be accessible via a combination of the jump and one manual carry capacity. See if you can collect them. Otherwise, we can move on to the next vehicle, the Small Digger. Teleport one down when you're ready. The Small Digger is an agile vehicle that drills walls much faster than a Rock Raider could. It is also capable to drill hard rock. Let's try it out on some of the walls near here. Like the miners, you can either give it a direct order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you go. So yes, the small digger can drill hard rock, but it takes like five minutes to do so. At least it did in the regular game, so we'll see if it's still that's still the case. If you wanted to increase the small digger's drilling speed, you can also upgrade it or teleport down additional small diggers to help out. So yeah, let's see it try to drill for the hard rock. I like the effects though. There isn't really all that much else to say about it. It's a cost-efficient drilling vehicle that never stops for sandwiches. Let's move on to the small mobile laser cutter. Teleport one down when you feel ready. The small mobile laser cutter is a vehicle quite unlike Rock Raiders on foot. The laser cutter it carries is a powerful tool with range that no standard drills can match. Once it's got a driver, it can be ordered to drill walls like a regular drilling equipment, but this is not what makes the laser cutter special. Lasers can be manually controlled, either by clicking on them twice or by pressing X. This will be this will activate the laser aboard the vehicle and allow it to be aimed directly. To get out of laser mode, you can either use the right mouse button, escape, or X. If you're in direct control, press X again. Let's send the small mobile laser cutter over here to laser these walls. Remember, reminder, double click to activate. Click a third time to fire and press escape to exit. All right, where's the laser cutter? That's the hover scout. Here's the laser cutter. There it is. Oh, there we go. The hard rock finally was destroyed. All right, double click. Laser shots require so much power that they can drain the power right out of energy crystals. All lasers have a free range within which taking a, within which taking a shot will require no crystals. Outside of this range, the cost to fire increases to a maximum uh, dra eh, to a maximum of one crystal. Drained crystals will be output at the power station, but the power they contain is not lost forever. If there is a recharge seam around, the crystals can be recharged there for use again. Lasers are very destructive and will damage mining equipment in addition to destroying walls, so aim them carefully. Lasers do more than drilling at a range. They are also able to demolish walls that regular drilling equipment can't access, such as corner walls. Consider this dirt wall. Your drilling machines are unable to reach it. However, it, your laser vehicles will make short work of the wall. So move your small mobile laser cutter over there and fire away. All right. Man, I did not know all this. The regular tutorials do not go into nearly this much detail on the vehicles. Well-aimed shots can open up access to new areas, like the laser shot you just made. You are no longer need to use a jumping vehicle to get in. Keep an eye out for any laserable walls. There might be valuable energy crystals behind them. The mining laser has a much more powerful laser than the small mobile laser cutter, but shares the same characteristics for controls. While it is immobile, its cheap cost, large free range, and great drilling power means it still holds its own compared to the mobile vehicles. 
In addition, it's possible to fire multiple mining lasers simultaneously. First, select both mining lasers with the drag box or by holding shift. Then, press either X or click on them one by one and start blasting. Beep. This is a powerful usage for lasers, but it gets even better. You can assign them for to a control group and activate them at any time. Like other games, assigning units to a control group is done with control X, where X is a number from 0 to 9. You can then immediately select those units from anywhere by pressing the associated number, or double press the number to select them and jump to them from anywhere on the map. You can also get pop-ups above the resource panel that are color-coded with this type of control group. All of this is also relevant to units too, but you cannot mix and match miners, vehicles, and buildings to a selection group. However, if you're you're able to filter select, if you drag, click and drag a selection box with the left mouse button, it will normally default to selecting miners. However, left ship will select only vehicles, left control will select only miners, and left alt will select only buildings. Feel free to try it out, but it's uh, hard to script a, a proper check for this beyond just waiting around, so click uh, right brace when you've got the hang of it, and press left brace if you want the explanations again. Okay, so if we control one, so we have a control group there. Whoop. So now if we select one, oh, so there they are. Solid drop. Yeah, if we press one, boom, it automatically selects. We can do this, and boom. How wonderful. Sure, you've got the hang of or sure you got the hang of it and didn't accidentally hammer that one too many times? Yes, alright then. Let's move on to the next vehicle, the rapid rider. Teleport one down. Let's go. Uh rapid rider. Rapid rider! Being a water vehicle, the rapid rider is teleported down at the docks instead of the teleport pad. This also means it requires a sailor to control it. Uh, I did not want to pause. It will automatically drop off resources it finds by the docks, where they can be transported back on land. Combined with one manual carry capacity that all vehicles have, it is effective if slow at transporting resources across the water. Let's pick up this crystal using the Rapid Rider. First, only a Rock Rider trained as a sailor, then you'll need to give the Rapid Rider the move order. Yeah, that's fine. All right. This guy's already trained, though. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out of vehicle. There we go. The Rapid Rider will then zoom on home and drop it off. But that's not all the Rapid Rider can do. The Rapid Rider can be upgraded at the docks to gain the capability to drill walls. I did not know that. While the drill upgrade is weak, this allows for walls adjacent to water to be drilled. Walls that could not be drilled without using conventional methods. Uh, upgrade the Rapid Rider by selecting it and then selecting the upgrade vehicle. And we will give it a drill. Now try it out on these walls. Water! Water! You've uncovered several energy crystals and pieces of ore. Carrying these back one at a time would be very tedious. However, there's a quicker method. If you park the Rapid Rider by the shore and get the Rock Raider onto the land where the resources are, then select the Rock Raider and directly control them, you can pick up resources with F and toss them into the water using G. Once all of the resources are tossed into the water, you can get back in the Rapid Rider, leave direct control mode, and the Rapid Rider will automatically pick up any it can reach and deposit them at the docks. What? Okay, that's very, very strange. Okay. Thought that was all the Rapid Rider had. For Hang on, I still have to do this. Park it by the shore. Get the Rock Raider onto the land where the resources are. Select it. Okay, direct control. You are facing F. And then using G. Okay, hang on. Shoulder view. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. This is weird. Was this this was this was not in the regular game, surely. This was not in the the regular game at all.
I thought they were gonna say we're gonna get a bigger vehicle. Like uh, the cargo carrier. No, 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 I do not want you to do that. No, no, no. Get back in the rapid rider. Now it'll automatically take the stuff back? Huh. Thought that was all it had? Think again. The Rapid Rider also comes with the same jump ability the Hover Scout has. Like the Hover Scout, it can be activated by double-clicking on the Rapid Rider or pressing space in first person. This allows for even more maneuverability in tight spaces, although it is admittedly rare to find a scenario where this is needed. But you could use it to get this crystal, for instance. That's the extensive functionality of the Rapid Rider wrapped up. Let's look at the last small vehicle, the Tunnel Scout. The Tunnel Scout is a swift aerial vehicle that is able to fly over land, water, and lava, making it excellent for reaching new areas. Aerial vehicles require a pilot who can be trained at the teleport pad. The Tunnel Scout's mobility is unmatched, but it also has another powerful piece of kit, its drill upgrade. The drill upgrade on the Tunnel Scout is weak, so weak that it won't automatically respond to drill wall orders, only responding to direct orders. But it is one of the few ways to drill walls on the edge of a lava lake. In addition, the one manual carry capacity all vehicles have allow it to slowly retrieve resources from very dangerous areas. This makes it a powerful utility vehicle. Furthermore, the one manual carry capacity also applies to dynamite. It's slow, but it does allow you to dynamite otherwise inaccessible hard rock across a lava lake. I won't make you suffer through a demonstration, partly because the script capacity for it doesn't really exist, but mostly because it's very slow to perform. It's a whole process. Start by directly controlling the raider, then get the dynamite from the tool store, get in the tunnel scout, fly over, get out of the tunnel scout, walk up to the wall, and press F to detonate the dynamite, finally run away. And with that, all of the small vehicles are covered. Small vehicles are inexpensive and effective, and an excellent complement to rock raiders on foot in the caverns of Planet U. However, sometimes you need a bit more firepower than the small vehicles are able to bring. For that, the LMS Explorer has a selection of large vehicles available. For slower, larger, bulkier vehicles, but they pack additional functionality and firepower that the poor small mobile laser cutter could only dream of. Let's start with the only large vehicle not to require the super teleport, the cargo carrier. Teleport one down. We have teleported down a cargo carrier. This large ca- uh, This large Katarm- Katam Katamaran doesn't do anything on its own, but it has the special ability to carry small vehicles over water. This isn't always the most useful, but sometimes getting a vehicle across a large lake is exactly what you need. Before you can use it, we'll have a sailor drive the cargo carrier. Once our cargo carrier has a sailor, we'll load up the small digger and transport it across the water. All right, park the cargo carrier next to the land. Um, excuse me. Click on the cargo carrier and click on the vehicle to pick up. Okay. Can you move, please? Excuse me, dude. Um, excuse me. Click on the cargo carrier. Click on the vehicle to pick up. Not all vehicles can fit in this. There's no script for it, so once you load up a vehicle, hit that. What is wrong with the cargo carrier? It's not moving. Oh, do we not have... Is there nobody in the cargo carrier? No, there's a guy right there. Unless that's the rapid rider. Oh my gosh, the rapid rider was on top of it. That's why. Okay, dude, once you're once you're done with that sandwich. Once you're done with the sandwich, can you please get into the cargo carrier? There we go. Move it over here. Okay, the rapid rider was in the way, that's why. There we go. Then select unload vehicle. Congratulations. Well done, the vehicle has made it safely to the other side of the river. Your vehicle can now help out with the drilling of nearby walls or establishing a small outpost. 
But that's not all the cargo carrier can do. If it's carrying a small mobile laser cutter, the laser is able to fire from aboard the cargo carrier. Take a look at this wall. It's impossible for any ground-based laser to hit it, and it's also impossible for the Rapid Rider or Tunnel Scout's drill to do so. But the small mobile laser cutter, when aboard the cargo carrier, can load it up. Great. Where is the laser cutter? There it is. Come on, get in the cargo carrier. Water! Did you know it's water? All right, bro. Again, there isn't a script check for this, so yeah, just blah, blah, blah. Once the small mobile laser cutter is aboard the cargo carrier, double click on the cargo carrier cutter combo to activate its laser. Well done, you've lasered the wall and opened up a new cavern. Caverns can often interconnect, so keep an eye out for any odd walls. Although, note that since this feature is new to Manic Miners, the standard campaign still replicates L while ago Rock Raiders levels will not make much use of it. Yeah, I knew this was new. That's it for the cargo carrier. Let's move on to the amazing large vehicles. All, all the land-based large vehicles are so large the teleport pad cannot teleport them in. You'll need a super teleport and, okay. We can do that. Get more rock raiders in here. That's interesting how you've got like the outlines of the crystals and the rocks that'll be placed there. Yeah, get those fences up. Transport truck seems to have the rest. All right, super teleport, here we come. These tutorials are long, man. They're really short in the main game. Small transport truck. Here he comes with the energy crystals. Here we are, the super teleport. Well done, you have a super teleport. Let's just get started with the large vehicles. The first vehicle we'll examine is the loader dozer. Transport one down. You've teleported down a loader dozer. This bulky vehicle easily deals with rubble and quickly clears it much faster than a rock raider could. It's also able to compact walls to reinforce them, preventing landslides from occurring. Combined with its immunity to landslide damage, this makes it a powerful vehicle, easily able to dr drive into an unstable area and clean it all up. Look at this unstable cavern, landsliding all the time. It would be far too dangerous for the rock raiders with drilling equipment to wander in there. But the loader dozer, once it's got a driver, can drive right in. Select it with the left mouse button, uh, then click the wall, uh, blah, 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 and instead of drilling walls, the loader dozer reinforces them. Cool. Loader dozer. Uh, can you get in the loader dozer, please? Let's reinforce this one first. So as you can see, oh wow, never mind. The loader dozer is way faster than it was in the vanilla game. Vanilla Rock Raiders, the the large vehicles are unbelievably slow. This one is actually pretty good. There we go. Man, these are landsliding much more than that. Loader dozer. Well done, all the walls have been taken care of. Now it's safe to send our drilling equipment in. Speaking of drilling equipment, the next vehicle we want to take a look at is the Granite Grinder. Yeah. One of the most iconic vehicles. This powerful walker drills walls much faster than the small digger. In particular, it's helpful for drilling hard rock and drills even quicker when upgraded. Combining this with its good speed, it's a consistently reliable and valuable vehicle. Let's try it out on some of these walls. So let's just send it over here to drill the ore seam. Alright. 
granite grinder. This is better be faster. Yeah, that's definitely faster than the vanilla game. It's not super fast, though. I like how it's like a walker, though. Just phases right through the buildings. Classic. Alright, watch how fast this ore seam goes down. Boom! Drilling isn't all the granite grinder can do. It's not. It also has the same jump ability as the Hover Scout, allowing it to make its way into narrow caverns or access dangerous terrain. It's the largest vehicle that's able to jump. As a quick refresher, yes, I know how to jump! That's all right for the granite grinder. Let's move on to its big brother, the Chrome Crusher. You'll need to be able to upgrade this teleport pad to level 2 to be able to teleport it down. Super teleport. There we go. Let's go, Chrome, cry, uh, Chrome Crusher. You've teleported down the Chrome Crusher. This Chrome Behemoth is respected by all Rock Raiders, as it is the most powerful drilling vehicle aboard the LMS Explorer. While ponderously slow and expensive, it also comes equipped with a laser and a scanner, making it capable of many tasks. That's really all there is to say about it. You know about drilling, you know about lasers, you hopefully know about the scanners. Open up the radar. Yep. This is the radar. It displays a 2D bird's eye view of the visible cavern. It will display hidden walls if you train geologists, construct a geological center, or use vehicles with scanners. That is way different than the radar in the vanilla game, but that's kind of cool. Moving on, next up, the large mobile laser cutter. Boom. You've transported this down. It packs a power... It, this vehicle packs power at smaller counterpart. The small mobile laser cutter could only dream of. With a good free range and great drilling power, its slow speed is a small trade-off for the amount of firepower you can get. When combined into a control group with multiple large mobile laser cutters, the result, while expensive, is devastatingly effective. Made even more devastating by how units in a multi-select will not friendly fire. It's undeniably expensive, though, and don't sleep on the mining laser, which is much cheaper and still has fantastic free range. We're gonna, we'll get to using it more in a bit, but first, let's move into the final vehicle, the tunnel transport. Tunnel transport. Guys, move out of the way, please. Chrome Crusher. No valid spawn points. Okay. Can we please get somebody in the large mobile laser cutter and drive away? It's blocking the way. The tunnel transport was an actual Lego set, but it was not in the original Rock Raiders. So, you know, good on them for doing that. You have tra teleported down the tunnel transport. This large aerial vehicle has two main roles. Firstly, it's able to carry resources over land, water, and lava, making it superior to the slow and water-limited rapid rider, or the manual clicks needed for the tunnel scout. Secondly, unlike the cargo carrier, it is able to load and unload vehicles, making it essential for transporting equipment across lava. Remember, to load a vehicle, click on the tunnel transport and select the vehicle you want to carry. However, the tunnel transport has an important difference from the cargo carrier. It is also able to carry large vehicles. And, like the cargo carrier, laser vehicles are able to fire while being carried. Meaning the tunnel transport and the large mobile laser cutter is a devastating combination that almost no wall can stand against. Let's load the large mobile laser cutter up and try it out. Hey, get back here, tunnel transport. Where are you? Where'd it go? There it is. You, load up the large mobile laser cutter. Boom! Tractor beam. So that's, there isn't a script check for that. Uh, I'll assume you're carrying it. Yes, we are. Try it out on some of these hard rock walls next to the lava. Walls that would be difficult to mine any other way. Remember to double click on a laser to activate it. Alright. Move over here. Oh ho ho. Tunnel transport. Power drop. Nicely done. The wall has been taken down. This is one of the very few ways to get rid of hard rock on the edge of lava. That's nearly, very nearly everything you need to know about vehicles, but there is one more thing. Odds are good that your tunnel transport was flying all over the place, picking up ore, ferrying odd crystals around. That's all well and good, but sometimes you want a vehicle to stay put and only accept orders when you get it directly. This can be done by selecting the vehicle and clicking the lock vehicle button. Tunnel transport. Which is right here. It's particularly helpful for the tunnel transport, which otherwise has a bad habit of running across the other side of the map to pick up three random ore that you don't really care about. And that is all there is to learn about the vehicles aboard the LMS Explorer. There only remains the initial objective, to drill all four crystal seams. Uh, hang on. Did we actually do all the vehicles? 
Hover scout, tunnel scout, small digger, transport truck, cutter, rapid rider, cargo, loader, granite, chrome, large. Oh, yeah, okay. That is it. One crystal seams across the water, one is across the lava, one crystal seams behind hard rock, and the final crystal seam is in a cavern inaccessible to rock raiders by foot. All right, use what you've learned and get those drilled. Cool, I will. Let's go over here first. Well done, you flew over and drilled the seam. Yeah, I did. All right, next up. <laughs> Actually, wait. We don't need you to do this. Small transport truck bro can do this. Small digger. Small, are you, small digger, not small transport truck. All right, we've done that. All right, the next one's over there. And then the other one's over here. Okay, we can't go over there. We sailed over the water and we drilled that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay we got that. Uh, where's Mr. Oh, Chrome Crusher. Yes. We will use you, won't we? Yeah, that's about the speed I expect from the Chrome Crusher. Tunnel transport. <laughs> so can we can we blast the energy crystal seam from over here? Actually, no. This is where we're gonna use the granite grinder, because granite grinder can jump past here. All right, Granite Grinder. Jump! Doggone you, jump! Oh, good job. Granite Grinder! There we go. Well done, you've jumped and you got that. I wonder what the best way to get the crystals back is. I'm sure you'll find a way. Uh, well, we have the tunnel transport. So how about we unlock it? Oh, but we still need... Well, no, it can reach the energy crystals over here. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. Unload that. Unload the laser cutter. Yes, good. Energy crystals are higher priority than ore. That's good. Well done, Cadet. You used the power of the vehicles to drill all the energy crystal seams. You've learned well. Go apply it. Uh, See so, so you fine. One final note. Uh, since several of the vehicle mechanics are new to Manic Miners, the standard campaign, which is a modified port of the original levels, will not require the new mechanics. So, to see the vehicles at their best, you will want to look into the remastered campaign or several of the community levels. But the standard campaign is a great place to start, too. In any case, that's all there is to using vehicles. Well done. Mission complete. Wow, that only took a half hour. Yeah, jumping was not a thing in the original Rock Raiders. I'm also pretty sure the lasers could only be used to blast monsters. Defending Rock Raider HQ. Boom. This tutorial will introduce you to the threats of Planet U and how to defend Rock Raider HQ against An them. Alright, in this mission we'll learn how to deal with rock monsters and slimy slugs. Click the yellow arrow to continue when it appears. appears. This is a rock monster. Oh, okay. Stay calm, it can't walk over lava or water, so this monster will leave the base alone. It doesn't mean harm to anyone and will peacefully try to find energy crystals to eat. Monsters can walk faster on rubble, but monster pa pa but power paths will slow them down. Therefore, rock monsters will stop any power paths that it steps on. This rock monster is lucky enough to have found an unattended energy crystal. It will quickly consume it once it reaches it. If the rock monster cannot find enough energy crystals to satiate its hunger, it will attempt to steal any energy crystals powering your buildings or vehicles by attacking them. Monsters will also attack any rock raiders or vehicles that happen to get too close. When the monster is satiated or can't find any more crystals, it will retreat into the nearest wall. 
monsters can only emerge from dirt, roost, lock, and hard rock. Then they, uh, they then can retreat into any type of wall. Monsters cannot emerge from nor escape into corners like these. Be wary of that when these walls are dug. Monsters can spawn from these walls that are then exposed. We will go for two ways to autonomously defend your HQ. Defensive tools that your Rock Raiders use and electric fences. Let's start with defensive tools. A Rock Raider can only carry a single defensive tool. Select all of your Rock Raiders to continue. Go to the tool menu, get the pusher beam. Why the pusher beam though? It's pretty bad. All right, well, there we go. A monster has appeared. Looks like you've armed your Rock Raiders in the nick of time. A rock monster is approaching your base. Don't panic. We are equipped to deal with this now. To fight the rock monster, select your Rock uh, Raiders and click on the monster. Now click the rock monster. Watch your Rock Raiders defend your HQ. Why me? Great work. Did you see how the pusher beams push the monster away from the HQ? They are an incredible defensive tools that can stop a monster dead in its tracks. For the next monster, let's use the action stations hotkey M. Click the bright red button on the top right and it says action stations. Another monster approaches. See how action stations causes your rock raiders to automatically start defending against the rock monster. Yeah, it's pretty cool. But again, uh, pusher beams are far from the best weapon. So I don't know why the tutorial's like, use these! Laser beams are way better. Way to go! During intense missions, you can keep action stations on for longer periods of time, and to always have defenders fighting threats. Make sure to turn off action stations, or your Rock Raiders will not perform any other tasks. Rock Raiders without defensive tools will not respond to action stations, nor pick up defensive tools automatically. Let's try the next defensive tool, the freezer beam. Select your Rock Raiders again when they reach the tool store. The freezer beam's all right. Now click the get freezer beam. They'll automatically get freezer beams from the tool store. And put the pusher beams back, I believe. Freezer beams deal less damage, but they will slow down any creature it hits. It deals extra damage against lava monsters. Oh look, a lava monster is approaching right now. Lava monsters can walk over lava if it is as solid as if it is solid ground. They are weak to freezer beams, but will resist laser beams. Go ahead and deal with this lava monster before we can continue. It's the lava monster. Oh, he's making his own rocks. No. He's going to shoot us. Bye-bye. Good job. Notice how that the lava monster was slowed down to a slug's pace. The lava monsters can be terrifying foes, but with the right defensive tools, they're no match for you. Now we have two more tools to try. Select your rock raiders when they reach the tool store. Now it's time to equip them with laser beams. Laser beams have no special effects, but they deal a lot of damage. Consider letting some of your rock raiders keep their pusher or freezer beams. No. <laughs> laser beams all the way. Unless it's route lava monsters. Monster. An ice monster is approaching. Ice monsters can walk on water. They are weak to laser beams, but they'll be completely unaffected by freezer beams. You better deal with this ice monster before it reaches your base. Let's go. Hey, Ice Monster. Look how fast that, that destroyed him. They definitely nerfed the weapons. The laser beam is normally like a one-hit kill for them. And we had four... No, five guys, and they all had to blast several times. Select only one Rock Raider this time. And the last defensive tool is the Sonic Blaster. Alright. Get a Sonic Blaster. Sonic Blasters deal no damage on their own, but they will stun any creatures in a small radius for a few seconds. They're powerful when paired with other defensive tools, but an entire team of Sonic Blasters will not be very useful. The best defense uses a combination of defensive tools. Relying on a single type of defense is risky. Now let's take a look at the last type of defense, Electric Fences. Click on the cavern floor here. Select the place Electric Fence, uh... uh the electric Fences are free to place if you have constructed a power station. Your Rock Raiders will automatically get an Electric Fence from the tool store and place it on the cavern floor. I 
I didn't know they were free with a power station. You'll see the electric fence to have its top light on and occasionally produce electric arcs to nearby buildings. This means if it is powered, fences do not use power paths, but instead connect wirelessly to nearby buildings. Uh, this small cone on the ground near the fence indicates that the ground is protected by a nearby electric fence. Fences protect the area between them and any nearby fences or buildings, as well as the area that they stand, highlighted in blue. We should probably make sure no monster gets past the red area as well. Any monsters going near an electric fence will be delivered an electric shock. After a shock, the fences will cool down for a few seconds before being able to deliver another one. Place another electric fence here to fully protect the base from this direction. Damn, that just came out of nowhere. Good work! Now no monster can get through the blue area without being shocked. How about we see it in action? Another rock, raider's another, another rock monster is approaching. Light it approach and you'll see what happens when this monster comes into contact with the electric fence. Hey! Hey, uh, I'm a little hungry. Oh man, there are no crystals around. Where, where are we gonna go, man? I'm hungry. Where are all the energy crystals? Well, nothing to be done. Guess I'll just have to make my own rock and attack the base. Oh boy. This is gonna be fun. Sure do love carrying rocks, man. This is great. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, here I come. I love my rock. I don't like electric fences. Oh, take that tools. No! Oh! That was a one-hit kill? Dang. Excellent. That rock monster didn't stand a chance. Neither did our tool store. Did you notice the rock monster produced a rock from the wall? Yeah, it took like 30 seconds. Monsters will throw rocks to break buildings. These rocks can still be thrown through fences, so make sure you have a decent defense perimeter around your base. If your buildings get damaged, your rock raiders will automatically train as engineers at the nearest upgrade station, which gives them the ability to repair damaged buildings. If this side is still unprotected, though, all right. Notice the button to place the electric fence is displaying a warning that the ground will not be powered if placed here. Try placing one anyway. Watch the light on top of the fence. This fence is not powered. It needs another nearby powered fence or building to get power itself. It can only reach across a single tile of ground to its car in its carnal direction, marked by the red area. Let's place the fence here to connect it. Good going. Now no monster can get through here without being the consequences. There's one more creature that can pose a threat to Rock Raider HQ, the Slimy Slug. They will appear from slimy slug holes instead of the walls, so they're unaffected by electric fences. Look how many slimy slug holes are near this base. This area is not a great location for a permanent HQ. In a real mission, it would be a good idea to move your Rock Raider HQ elsewhere. Slimy slugs are gluttonous creatures, but not harmful. They'll not damage your base, but they'll instead drain power from your buildings, which depletes your de collected energy crystals. Slimy slugs, invading your base. slimy slugs are invading. Either fend them off with defensive tools or let them drain energy crystals peacefully. Oh, hey! Slimy slugs are way easier to deal with in this than they were in the base game. In the base game, like, the only way you could take care of them was Sonic Blasters, and that would just maybe make them uh, go away. If they happen to get hit by a stray shot of your guns, they would take damage, but your Rock Raiders would never shoot at them voluntarily. If a Slimy Slug drains some of your power, the energy crystals will be depleted from the power station and turn purple. They cannot be used for buildings or vehicles and need to be recharged. Purple energy crystals can be recharged at recharge seams. Be observant, as there sometimes aren't any easily accessible recharge seams in the cavern. The Rock Raiders will automatically grab energy crystals that need to be recharged and find the nearest recharge seam. Watch as they recharge your entire energy crystal supply. Hey, we got him back! Why don't the slimy slugs just drain stuff out of the recharge seam then? It's like an all-you-can-eat buffet for them. Be on your guard when dealing with slimy slugs. They're harmless to your units, but if they drain all of your power, your electric fences will no longer protect your HQ from rock monsters. That's all there is to learning about autonomously defending Rock Raider HQ. Good work, Rock Raider. That was way easier than the last tutorial. All right, I'm so happy. Like, laser beams are just good for everything except uh, lava monsters, I guess. 
Well done. You're now an expert at defending Rock Raider HQ. Boom. And I think that's it for all the tutorials. There are four others here, but it looks like they're locked for the time being. Oh, coming soon. All right. Well, that's it for the tutorials. That was a lot of information. Next time, we're actually going to start playing the campaign. And that's where we're actually going to start getting real levels and put our stuff to the test. So that's going to be fun. Hey, <laughs> make sure you come back. It's going to be really cool. Anyways, I hope you guys tune in for more. Eh, this is going to be the most boring episode by far. So tune in next time. It's going to get exciting. Have a fantastic rest of your day and God bless everybody.